What's going on, everybody? How's it going? Let's see who we got in the house today before we get started. Is my uh, is Melanated in here? Melanated. We got Melanated in. They're always here, always here, giving us giving us such good vibes with all those nice emojis. We're probably typing in the emojis right now. Anyways, just like the title says, everybody, we have got a juicy, juicy live today. And, you know, something that I've been seeing a lot lately has been Bitcoin going to $80,000 per coin. And it's definitely not out of the ordinary. And it's just so wild to think, like, I was literally in crypto when Bitcoin was like $1,000. And now it's actually hitting some really, really, really big highs um, and getting into like the $80,000 range. It's just mind blowing to think that the existing system is literally crumbling so, so, so much right now that, um, that these crypto assets are just mooning, you know? And I think people have just kind of caught on to what's going on here in regards to the, the, what's it called? The Ponzi scheme of fiat currencies. And this is just something that obviously has been kicked down the road for man, millennia, really back to the Sumerians, as far as we can tell. Right. And what happens, they just always debase the currency. And I think this time is really different. And why is it different? Well, it's different because you're no longer able to do that with cryptocurrencies. And especially Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, you know, some of the Bitcoin maxis would say that you could do that with, with uh, Ethereum. But I think at the end of the day, the economics of things are getting better and better. And they're going to even out the playing field. All right. They're going to even out the playing field. And so we've got the Bitcoin halving coming up. What is the Bitcoin halving? For those of you who don't know, Bitcoin halving is essentially a time uh, in the algorithm of Bitcoin that basically the mining rewards, which is how like miners, they validate transactions, they get paid rewards for solving blocks, um, that it gets cut in half. So, you know, if, if they were producing, I don't know, I think it's like 900 or 900 Bitcoin per day or something like that. If they're producing 900 Bitcoin per day, then what that means is it gets cut in April 15th of 2024 is when they're expected, when it's expected to happen to 450 Bitcoin per day. So it drives the scarcity of it up and the demand of it up as well. And that's why we have, that's why everybody's really, really looking forward to this Bitcoin having. On top of that, you have guys like BlackRock that are just buying so much Bitcoin. It is ridiculous. You have, uh, it's rumored, I think like, what is it? The, the Saudis or one of them is, is buying Bitcoin. Um, and they're not just like buying small amounts, guys. Like BlackRock, literally is almost the largest holder of Bitcoin uh, right now. I think there's only one other, one or two other, like uh, the, the grayscale um, trust that had before, but I think they've sold a tremendous amount uh, and now it's almost evening out. And then we have MicroStrategy. And I think that there is some like private wallets, just nobody knows who owns them uh, that may own, but there's only like one or two of those. So we've got, you know, state actors jumping in on this. We've got sovereign funds buying Bitcoin. And so it's going to be really, really, really interesting to see what's going on. But you couple that with this. Okay. And this is, this is where like, you have to be patient. Cause remember when I told you at the beginning where like I got in when Bitcoin was like a thousand bucks, maybe even less, maybe even less. I have to go. I want to go check the chart. Actually, let's check the chart out. Cause I want to Maybe I was even in when it was less. Let's go to a trading view and let's pull this up. Cause I'm, now I'm curious if it was like, if it ever, you know, got into the eight hundreds or something like that, but let's see here. Logarithmic and let's go. All right. We're on the weekly. So I got, I got in back here in like June, July, 
of um of 2017 so let's take a look so this is like around the time that i got let's so let's say right here no so i probably saw okay so maybe i'm tripping out but i probably saw you know, 2000, 1900, 2000 dollars Bitcoin. I remember it being eighteen hundred dollar Bitcoin that I was buying in on, but still to go from that to you know to this, I mean to 69. Man, that's just wow. There's 70. Oh, well, it's down to 69 right now. So this is like this is really history in the making. And and again, it didn't happen overnight. But you're starting to see the reserves hit a nine-year low. A nine-year low. I haven't even been in crypto for nine years. I've been in seven years. Hold on. i got to stay hydrated, guys. Stay hydrated. Especially if you're in this side of the, the world. It's very hot these days. All right. So I got this, like, hydrogenate, hydrogenating water thing. It, like, hydrogenates the water. I who knows if it works or not but anyways uh look there's melanated melanated brown is here all right always always the best cheerleader with all of the amazing emojis in there i love it i love it all right so this is a big deal because the more supply that keeps getting taken off line the more the price of bitcoin is going to pump and i just think we're going to see a massive, massive, massive pump coming up very, very soon. Now, here's another thing, all right? And this is kind of funny because, you know, you've got like these people that are super into gold. And let's just kind of like take a look at like what gold, I think it's like AUM, not AUM, A, uh, let's see, gold. <laughs> uh, AXAU. So like gold really hasn't done too much you know i mean it's not like a wow factor you know it's just kind of like been somewhat flat look at this it was like at 2064 dollars per ounce of gold and now it's like 2100 like compare that to bitcoin you know where it wasn't like in 2020 and this thing just doesn't even compare it doesn't even compare even if you take a look at it here where it was like 1100 so what it's like doubled it's not that big of a deal by the way guys gals i need i need some help here because i want to keep getting the word out and we're talking about like the next level stuff i'm actually going to show you some next level stuff today and something that you can take advantage of for free uh today by uh exposing a new strategy and something where a lot of money is starting to flow into but it hasn't really caught yet like the the insiders that are in on it, you're going to be in on it, but I need for you to hit that like button in YouTube because that definitely, definitely helps the algorithm. If you're not on YouTube, if you're watching this from like Facebook or X or something like that, head, head over to YouTube, subscribe and like this video because it brings more and more people here to the cause which is getting out of the United States dollar, getting out of all these crappy fiat currencies in the world. All of them are dog crap, all right? All of them are, I'm just going to say the word, they're just dog shit. They're dog shit paper, they're worthless. Did you know that a penny, okay, a penny is, so one penny is supposedly worth like one cent, but it's actually worth like a third of a cent because they've put like all these different, uh, and I forget what it was. They, it was like, it's like 2% bronze. It used to be a hundred percent bronze, but then like the, br uh, no, it wasn't bronze. It was copper, but the copper started becoming more scarce than the actual coins. So they di started diluting it with some other chemical in there, uh, or some other, you know, whatever, uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank, but whatever else they can mix it up with. And, and now it's worth like a third of a penny where like before a penny actually would go up in value, believe it or not. Um, but they're not doing that. They don't care about what the money's worth anymore. Nickels, nickels allegedly may still have, uh, the same amount of nickel. They say that like nickel has like a nickel is worth instead of five cents, it's worth like 6.9 cents or something like that. So 
anyways, I didn't know that. I actually didn't know that. I just always thought like, oh, okay, well, that's just the amount of, you know, that element, that's the word, element that they have in there. All right. But they don't. All right. They don't. And so, you know, Bitcoin is really a way for, for us to get ahead here because look at this. All right. This South American gold and precious metals producer, all right, announces it plans to purchase 24,800 Bitcoin. That's $1.7 billion worth of Bitcoin. They're just like, oh, you know what? Screw it. Let's just go out and let's buy it. What? $1.7 billion. Do you know how much money that is? All right, guys and gals. And so this is like, this is where, uh, again, things, I think by the end of this year are going to get crazy. This isn't financial advice, but I actually think that we could see uh, a $1 million Bitcoin by the end of this year. As crazy as that sounds, what happens if nobody wants to have dollars anymore and everybody wants to have Bitcoin? And it, it, things just happen like really slowly. Again, let's go, let's go back to the Bitcoin chart here. Let's see. Bitcoin. Oh, shoot. All right. Bitcoin. Like, every, listen, I lived through this. All right. I lived through this here. And then I also lived through this. Okay. And I'll tell you, I had people coming up to me because I was teaching crypto back then. All right. And they were like, dude, did you sell your Bitcoin? Oh my gosh. You probably like lost so much money. And I was like, oh uh, no, I'm actually still holding on to it. And they're like, dude, so stupid. Cause like I bought Bitcoin at like 14,000 bucks. Let's see. They bought like here. Right. Which even now, if you would have just held on. Right. But like, look, it went down by 78%. And that was from here. Imagine from the top here. All right. People just FOMO'd in 83% negative. But here's the, here's the, here's the rub. All right. Like it, even if you would have gotten in here, but you would have kept dollar cost averaging, you'd be up 269%. Gold didn't even do that. It didn't even come close to doing that. All right. Didn't even come close to doing that. And so this is now, if you were to dollar cost average all through here, I mean, you would have made way more than 269 per, 269%. Uh, you would have made, man, God knows how many thousands of dollars. And if you would have, or thousands of percent, and if you would have been doing like liquidity pool mining, which is what we teach now in decentralized finance, you would have absolutely annihilated this because you would have earned more in Bitcoin. You would have earned more in Ethereum in these very scarce cryptocurrencies. All right. Now, so many people, they're just like, well, you know, what happens if like uh, there's an EMP? The fuck do you think is going to happen if there's an EMP? You're going to sit there and be thinking, where are my Bitcoins? No, where's my cash? No, you're going to be like, how am I going to eat and drink water tomorrow? <laughs> how am I going to go to the bathroom? That's what you're going to be thinking about. All right. So it doesn't matter. It's, it's perceived value, but also it's a more efficient way to transfer value. And it's way more efficient than the dollar, which is printed out of thin air, thin, absolute thin hair. All right. And so, so here's, here's one of the plays though, that I talked about, uh, last week to my students and I'm going to bring it to, to my, uh, YouTube community, but Pyth Network launches price feed data on Bitcoin layer to Merlin chain. Now, some of you are like, what did he just say? What does this even mean? Well, Pyth is somebody, some people call it Pith. Pith. I think it's just such a weird name. Pyth is what I, I like Python. You want like a Python of a crypto. You don't want like Pith. Pith. Like you can't even really pronounce that, right? So Pyth Network launches the price feed on Bitcoin layer two. So what is a layer two? So Bitcoin has like scaling issues. All right. And this is why like, I'm not a Bitcoin maxi. All right. I'm not sitting here like, yes, Bitcoin is everything. I'm never going to do anything with my Bitcoin except for sit there and watch it on the blockchain and just stare at it and let it collect dust. No, like this is a brand new financial system. And again, this is what we teach. Ruben, 
for the people that are interested um, in in getting into our course, by the way, I'm going to have Ruben drop in, in the banner here um, how you can get in. There's There it is. We have a 50% off our monthly reoccurring subscription. It's down from like $194 per month to $97 per month. It's not going to last forever. But these are the things that we really, really teach and go into. But here, when you take a look at a layer two solution, it actually helps Bitcoin scale. It alleviates the network congestion on the actual Bitcoin um, network. Now, Bitcoin is the slowest one of all of of all of the blockchains. It is the slowest. All right, even though it's the oldest, and that's okay because they do have other layer two solutions. Now, why is Pyth so important to this layer two? Well, let's say for instance, I need to, I need whatever. I, I, I'm going to put gold. I'm going to put dollars like tokenized gold, tokenized dollar on this Bitcoin system. Let's say they hate every other coin so badly that they don't even put any other coin. They, they're going to put stocks on this, all sorts of things on it, right? Well, what ends up happening is you need something called an Oracle that connects the real world pricing to the blockchain so that you make sure you have accurate pricing. Okay. Now we have one Oracle that stands out above the rest, which is link and link is actually in our managed vault. Okay. And our managed vault is a, um, is a way for us to actually manage your crypto without you losing custody. You literally keep it inside of your wallet. Uh, we're just able to manage it, but you're the only one that can take it out. But the link is like the OG. All right. Link is the OG when it comes to oracles. It's been around for the longest. They do have some really, really cool technology behind it, especially a new technology called CCIP, which uh, potentially in the future could connect your actual bank to your wallet. Like you could seamlessly go from the banking system into the blockchain system. No third party intermediary like KuCoin, uh, whatever, Binance, Coinbase, et cetera. All right. But Pyth is also one of these um, oracles. Okay, and I'm invested in both Pyth and, and this. But so Pyth has officially announced the launch of its Pyth Oracle network on Merlin Chain, a Bitcoin layer two protocol known for its ZK rollup networks, decentralized Oracle network, and on chain BTC fraud proof modules, according to a recent press release. Now, here's where it gets really cool. All right. The Pyth price feeds are now operational on Merlin chain, granting developers access to over 400 low latency data feeds from both crypto and traditional asset classes. All right. The Pyth Oracle's pull architecture uh, allows smart contract applications to request price updates as needed, ensuring access to the most current data while benefiting from high fidelity and high frequency information. Now, let me tell you what this means. Okay. So like as a trader, you want, and especially the, the, the lower, the time frame that you trade on the lower, the latency that you want. So what is latency? So let's say for instance, if I pull the trigger on, you know, a trade, I want to know that that trade is going to go through precisely and very, very quickly because there's a lot of money that I can make there. If I'm a high frequency trader. Okay. By getting in and out very, very fast, low latency is considered like, I think something like a 10th of a second or something like that, a 10th of a second. Now, in order to get that sort of low latency, you have to be like one, you have to have like the craziest internet connections in the world. All right. Just super, super fast. Right. You've got to have fast oracles. All right. And you've probably got to be very close to the broker or the exchange that you're, that you're buying from. Okay. Well, Pyth actually has a third of a second in latency, which is still considered high latency, but by crypto standards, very low latency. Why? Well, you have all of these other oracles like API three or Chainlink, 
uh, Teller, all right, and I've owned all of those crypto assets um, that actually have a very, very high latency. How high? We're talking like five minutes latency, all right, on some of these oracles. And that's, that's pretty gnarly, all right? That's pretty gnarly. That is a very, very high, high, high latency. So to go from like five minutes to a third of a second, Pyth could be like one. And now they're integrating with like the whole Bitcoin ecosystem. This could be a really, really big, uh, big deal. Now, what am I doing with like Pyth and Bitcoin to capitalize on these things? Okay, this is something I've shown to you all a lot, but I'm leverage trading it. Okay, I'm leverage trading. Now, while I drink my my awesome water, because again, I want to stay hydrated. Can you guys hit that like button? Maybe even send this live to somebody because somebody may not know about crypto right now. They may not, like somebody in your family and they're just like, man, I don't understand even where to start. This is where you start. So start hitting that like button if you just joined us. And share it with your friends. All right, thank you. Thank you for granting me my, my quick water break. All right, so here you can see, I actually ended up coming in here. I forget what the dollar amount was, to be quite honest with y'all. Um, but I ended up coming in here with a three times leverage. So what is three times leverage? Let's say, for instance, I came in here with like 500 bucks. All right, I come in here with $500. And what ends up happening is if I use three times leverage from this exchange, there's, there's going to be some people that are going to lend me an extra thousand dollars. So 500 plus 500 plus 500. So now if it goes up Bitcoin, meaning if Bitcoin goes up, I'm actually going to take advantage of that upward trajectory because I've got some extra leverage that I'm using. Now, if it goes down, all right, well then that's the, I, I have the compounding effect to the downside. And I want to show you all how that, how that's working here, because I also have, um, a few positions that are down. Now I haven't had these positions open for a very long time. And I'll explain to you when I open these positions for Bitcoin here. Um, but you can see here, like this one's negative 3.29%, whatever. So that's not a big deal, but this one allegedly says, uh, this, this price feed is off. Okay. This price feed is off, but I ended up doing a two times leverage on this one. And the leverage has gone up because the amount that I borrowed was dollars in dollars, not in the actual cryptocurrency when I put it in. Okay. And what that does is if it, if the price of Tia goes down and I'm not shorting the market, okay, then what ends up happening is my leverage goes up because that's where, because the, my dollar value versus my position has now skewed in the opposite way, but you can clearly see here like Solana, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Okay. These two, I started off with three times leverage. This I started with uh, three times leverage as well. And you can see that the, um, the amount of leverage that I'm using has gone down because the price of the cryptos has gone up and the USD value has remained the same. Okay. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Oh my gosh. Sorry guys. Man, I thought I was sharing my screen the entire time. All right, here we go. So, um, so right here, you can see that. So here's the positions. All right. And then this, here's the positions. Here's the profit and loss. All right. So you can clearly see that I'm way up on these, but these ones, I'm not so much up. All right. So this is, Let's, let's go back into this. Let me, let me start from, let me start fresh for everybody because this is really important because I want to, I do want to show you what I'm doing with my Bitcoin. All right. So right here, you can see here, my Bitcoin leverage trade, I'm up 400%. Now Bitcoin, let's, let's actually click. Let's see how much Bitcoin is actually up since I got into this. Let's take a look at when these trades took place. Let's scroll down. So 719. All right, is the exact date. 
let's go to the daily here and let's go here to oh man let's see here july or june june okay so june july 9th oh man 19th all right so right about here okay so let's grab this and let's go from here and i'm going to show you the difference okay i'm going to show you the difference between the gains that if i would have just bought bitcoin and done nothing all right let's just start from here and where we're at now oh man i just totally screwed myself here all right hold on let's actually do this let's make this a little bit bigger and let's actually there we go all right much better much better all right but let's let's make this so that everybody can see the difference okay because y'all are going to want to be paying attention on this because look at this watch this where are my tools oh you're kidding me you can't you can't do the tools here let's see here all right let's try from here here we go so we're at july 19th all right look at this here all right so from here to here which is where we're at bitcoin 134 percent not bad if you would have just bought bitcoin and held it all right bought bitcoin and held it but look at this all right let's take a look at this position i'm up 401 dollars sorry 401 percent man my brain is really foggy today i'm up 401 percent versus 134 percent are you all seeing that are you seeing how if you understand leverage how you can make way 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 more money okay and here you can do this with taking very very little risk now the risk is if I get liquidated at 29,180, okay, that's the point that I would get liquidated at this point in time, all right? But the the, the probability that Bitcoin is going to go back down to 29,000, probably not going to happen. Probably not going to happen, everybody. I'm, I am not, I'm not confident that that's going to occur because it's already just taken off and we see all the things that are going on with it, all right? We see all the things that are going on. So this is, this is a strategy. I'm going to have a video up on, um, I think on INJ leverage trading, and it's going to have like a little course for free. Okay. Coming up. So pay attention to, to that video because you're going to get a lot of value out of that. Now, here's another thing that I think was really interesting from today. Uh, the CFTC calls ETH a commodity in KuCoin complaint. So today there was a complaint that was filed against KuCoin, all right, and, and their founders. They're trying to get them in jail, which whatever, they, they, they kind of played a bit of a risky game. They made billions of dollars, by the way, billions and billions of dollars. But the CFTC basically filed a uh, complaint against them, trying to get them into jail for like five years each. Who knows if that'll happen? I don't even know if they live in the US. I don't think they do, so. They, they'd have to get extradited. But here's the cool thing. The complaint charges KuCoin illegally dealt in off-exchange commodities future transaction and leveraged margined or financed real uh, retail. Okay, whatever. That's boring. All right. So in the CFTC's complaint against the exchange, the regulator says that KuCoin allowed investors to trade commodities, including... Bitcoin, Ether, and Litecoin. So this is the sort of stuff that, in my opinion, is really, really, really good for... I mean, you never want to see a huge exchange getting sued like this. But when the CFTC is actually using this to bring Ethereum under its purview, um, I like that a lot more because this, it is not a security. Guys, gals, I don't care what you say. 
Ethereum is not a security, just hands down, not a security. All right. I actually use Ethereum gas every single day of my life. All right. And it is used on multiple different networks. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, they, they, when we switched over from proof of work to proof of staking, which means like Ethereum, you used to actually mine it using miners like Bitcoin does. Um, and now they moved it over to proof of stake where you actually just stake it. So we don't need to, it, we don't need to have all this electricity that we're using towards it. But I actually think that Ethereum is going to get their ETF, hopefully in May at some point in time. But here is one of the reasons that I actually think it's going to happen. So you have BlackRock, all right? BlackRock's build, this is their like, this is going to be their app, all right? Uh, it's going to be a tokenized fund on Ethereum, okay? And they're going to build it on Ethereum. That's wild. So BlackRock announces its first tokenized fund on Ethereum last week. Uh, Bernstein, I don't even know who that is. Bernstein says asset managers' decisions to use Ethereum lends legitimacy to smart contract blockchain. Um, so these guys, BlackRock, they've got $9 trillion in assets under management. I mean, let's just face it. They probably control the world at this point in time. And they're not going to let Ethereum sneak through their fingers. Ethereum is the most widely used blockchain in the world. Uh, it, in my opinion, it's the most decentralized, maybe not outside of Bitcoin, but it's very decentralized and it's very secure. It's been around for a long time uh, and it's worked out a lot of the bugs, which is great. But this is definitely something that's going to be huge. And again, they are building this on top of Ethereum. Now, let's see here. Um, now, there's a there is a. Um, an ETF uh, deadline that's coming up in May of this year. All right. It's May. I don't know what the exact date is. And BlackRock has filed for an ETF. Now let's, let's just Google BlackRock uh, ETF approval. All right. Just so check this out. Uh, all right, BlackRock spot Bitcoin. No. Here, let's see, BlackRock approval record. There we go. Okay, here we go. So BlackRock had a record of 575 approvals to one ETF, one ETF that has been rejected in history. All right, these guys aren't joking around. These guys are like the kings of ETF. And again, you know, I never want to see this much power in, in, in a in a company unless they're buying my crypto that I'm selling to them or they're pumping my bags because I'm like providing liquidity on decentralized exchanges, which is how we make money, by the way, over here. Um, but these guys have such a good track record. Like, would you bet against this? Like if somebody was like, look, you know, you could make a million dollars. You could make a million dollars if you bet against BlackRock in an ETF. Okay. And you put in whatever, a hundred dollars in right now, would you take that bet? Like that? And I wouldn't, I know I wouldn't. If somebody's like put in a hundred, but I'm like, I'm going to lose my hundred bucks. Like, why would I, why would I want to lose a hundred dollars? All right. Rule number one, don't lose money. Right. So this is, this is the key. This is the key here that I think that a lot of people just are are not looking into it. And there's a lot of FUD going around fear, uncertainty, and doubt where people are saying, you know, this Bitcoin ETF or sorry, this Ethereum ETF is not going to go through. I personally think it is. I, I personally think that, you know, we're going to see probably Ethereum go to, and especially since they're using it for their tokenized, again, they're using it for their tokenized build fund. What? come on guys and gals, like don't like the writing is on the wall. And here's the thing. All of you are educated on this already, but there's a lot of people that don't know about this stuff. And when are they going to get in? When this thing's at the top, when this thing's at the top. All right. But anyways, this is, this is big news. This is definitely, definitely big news. Um, 
let's take a look at our managed vault. I want to show everybody because we're very, very heavy in our managed vault. This is a way for us, again, to manage our students' money without you losing custody. All right. Um, fully decentralized. We're doing, we're doing good. We're doing, we're headed in the right direction for this month, 10% up this month. All right. I'll take it. But let's take a look at like what the majority of our holdings are here. All right. The majority of our holdings are Ethereum. All right. And the reason it is, is because we paired it in these liquidity pools. These liquidity pools are a way for us to earn money for people trading these cryptos. All right. And the more, the more in demand the crypto is, the higher the volume, the more fees we make. All right. So we make like more in Ethereum. We make more in IMX. We make more in SNX. And I have plenty of videos um, on how this works, by the way. But we also have these um, debt positions where we've got uh, Ave staked um, Ethereum. Okay. Ave staked Ethereum. And we've got about $929,000 just in this alone. So we're earning like We've, we've used uh, some debt to buy more Ethereum, all right? We've used some debt to buy more Ethereum to compound the effects of our gains, okay? And it's been working. It's been working like a charm, actually. We've been outperforming the market by a lot in, uh, in the recent months since we switched to this, uh, to this scenario. But we are holding a lot of Ethereum. And again, imagine Ethereum goes from 3,000 to 10,000. All right. And we're making more in Ethereum here. And then we've also taken this shit coin called the United States dollar and put it into Ethereum, which is more scarce. In fact, it's actually declining in the amount of Ethereum per year, because every time we use the network, a certain amount of Ethereum gets burnt. All right. So it is deflationary. Unlike Bitcoin, Bitcoin is stagflationary. So if there's only ever going to be uh, 21 million Bitcoin with Ethereum, it could go down, I guess, eventually to zero. Okay. Or never, never move outside of that and only be using like it's layer two solutions or something. Um, so this is what we're doing again. If you're interested in learning more on how you can participate in this, all right, you can head to that link down below. I have it right here. And then Ruben, can you drop that in the chat? Um, we have 50% off right now. Head over to arcrypto.io forward slash galaxy. It's our monthly subscription. It was uh, before $194. Right now it's $97. And I think that uh, it's not going to last for that long, but it's really, really worth it. We have our own app on the Apple store, on the Google store, and here on the computer um, and it's just really, really, really cool. I should, I'm going to take you all for a, for a spin, a spin of the app here really soon. So y'all can see that we're not joking around. We have all these interactive, um, self-guided courses that took us tons of time. The app took us like hundreds of thousands of dollars in over a year to build. Um, but one, once it's now it's up, oh man, y'all are going to die when you see this y'all not die. Y'all are going to live when you see this, you're all going to live when you see this. Uh, but there's the, there's the, um, the link in the chat. If you haven't signed up already, definitely give it a, a, a whirl, you know, you got nothing to lose like 97 bucks. Okay. You like you learn something for one month and then you're like, oh, okay, this isn't for me. So what? Like 97 bucks. Right. Or you invest 97 bucks per month and you're like, you drop kick, you, you know, not YouTube because you're watching YouTube, but you drop kick Netflix, you drop quick the HBO max, you drop kick, you know, uh, Disney plus if you're into that sort of thing and you start actually listening to things that are going to make you money, man, that's, that's where my money's at. I'm done with all of those other things to be quite honest with you. Um, but Anyways, yeah, we got lots of stuff. We got lots and lots of stuff uh, that we want to show you all. Uh, one last thing, if you like this content today because it helps the algorithm, hit that like button, subscribe, and then also put on the notification button. So anytime I upload a new video or anytime I'm about to go live, you'll know it. We're going live on Thursday. It's the final part of our four-week series, all right? And I think uh, the title of it is Time is, uh, what is it? Hold on. It's time is, what is it, Ruben? 
Time is the new luxury. Time is the new luxury. All right. So, uh, and it really is. And I'm going to show you, like, I'm going to bring it full circle. Cause like, I don't know. I live a pretty cool life. I think why I'm a little tired and my brain's not firing is cause I played too much paddle ball today, but I was with one of my best friends playing paddle ball till 10 30 or something like that. Went home, ate a nice breakfast, uh, some nice plantains, uh, with some guacamole. Uh, and it was, it was awesome, but I really get to live my life on my terms. That's why I do all this. I want to spend time with my friends. I want to exercise. I want to work on this, the machine. I want to work on this, my mindset. And that's not going to happen if I'm just working all day long in a cubicle, uh, bored out of my mind. That's not how it's going to work. So make sure again, subscribe because we're going to let you know uh, there, as soon as we get on, you'll get that notification button and you can, you can watch it. Now, if you want to go back, there's a three, there's four, it's a four part series, but there's three parts that we've already done. All right. And I think every single one of them is important because it leads to the next part. Uh, but you can watch those in our live section here in YouTube. All right, guys, gals, speaking of food, I'm going to go eat some more. I think I need to eat more food because I am hungry and a little tired and I need a little pick me up. All right, everybody. Lots of love. See you on Thursday. We've got more alpha coming. If you're already part of our Wealth Renegade NFT. I'll see you tomorrow on Wednesday, uh, on Gavin's Day in our private group. All right, everybody. Cheers. See you later.